After the script generated by ubersubject.py has completed, navigate to the directory containing the preprocessed data. By default, Apni will create a new directory tree. From the sub await directory, you can navigate to the results directory by typing cd subject results group.flanker subject.sub await sub await dot results. This directory contains different versions of the images after each preprocessing step. For example, the files that contain the string pb01 or processing block 01 and the string t shipped indicate that these images have been slice time corrected using the 3D T shift command. Now open the AFNI GUI. Click the underlay button and left click on the file pb00 sub await r01.tcat. Then click on the graph button next to any of the axial, sagittal, or coronal views to view the time series. Since the initial volumes had already been discarded before the data was uploaded to OpenNeuro, all of the time points are of the same relative intensity. Else, we would see a large spike in the signal intensity at the beginning of the run. Similarly, the PB01 images should be the same as the PB00 images. If you examine the output text from the preprocessing, you will see a message printed during 3D T shift, which states that the data sets are already aligned in time and that the output data set is just a copy of the input data set. For now, just make sure that the two processing blocks look the same. The next file to look at is the PB02 Volreg files, which have been motion corrected, co-registered to the anatomical image, and warped to a standardized space, which in this case was the MNI152 template. If you click on the PB02 images, the view changes from original view, or the raw data space, to tally rack view, indicating that these images have been normalized. When you view this processing block for other subjects, the basic shape and outline of the images will look nearly identical, since they have all been warped to the same template. Again, check the images and the time course in a few different locations to make sure there are no obvious artifacts. Processing block 3 is smoothing, which averages the signal of the nearby voxels together in order to increase signal and cancel out noise. These images will look more or less blurry as a function of the size of the smoothing kernel that you apply to the data. In this case, a smoothing kernel of 4 millimeters will blur the data slightly, but not by much. Look at the images to make sure that the blurring looks reasonable for this smoothing kernel size. The last preprocessing step generates scaled images, in which each voxel has a mean signal intensity of 100. This allows us to specify any changes relative to the mean as percent signal change. In other words, a value of 101 could be interpreted as a signal change of 1%. Due to the gray scale of the images being more uniform in the brain voxels, as compared to greater variability in the signal outside of the brain, these images will look less defined than the previous images. Nevertheless, you should still be able to see the outline of the brain, and the time series values of the brain voxels should all be close to 100. In addition, AFNI creates a mask that excludes any non-brain voxels. The mask is binary. It will contain ones in the voxels that are determined to be within the skull and zeros outside of the skull. The full mask image is a union of all the individual functional image masks. Voxels with very low signal intensity are not considered brain voxels, and in some cases, voxels are excluded in the orbital frontal cortex, which is susceptible to signal dropout. The mask group image is a more generous mask, conforming more to the outlines of the template brain. Later on, we can use these masks to restrict our analysis to only brain voxels. When viewing the results of the anatomical preprocessing, we will want to make sure that both the skull stripping looks reasonable and that the images were normalized properly. First, open the image Anat with Skull Warped. 
If you have copied the MNI152 image into the A global directory, load it as an overlay image. You can also copy it into the current directory by typing from the terminal cp tilde slash abin slash MNI average 152t1 star dot. You may notice that while the sagittal view of these two images overlaid looks fine, the axial and coronal views look worse. It seems like the image is shifted to the right. Although it is common to have some variability in normalization, this is more than we would expect. The Anat W skull warped image, it should be noted, is the result of a warp being applied to the raw anatomical image. The warp itself was computed by normalizing the skull stripped anatomical to a template. If that normalization was off somehow, it would have propagated to the other images. To check this, load as an underlay the image anat underscore final. Now we've found the source of the error. Part of the brain on the left has been removed during normalization. But how do we fix this? When you detect an error in the preprocessed images, you should examine the output of your preprocessing script. If you started the script from the uber subject.py GUI, the output will be printed to the preprocessing command window. A copy of the text will also be stored in a file called output.proc followed by the name of the subject ID, which is located one directory above the preprocessed data. This text will contain both warnings and errors. Errors indicate that either a file is missing or that a command was not able to run successfully. Usually the script will exit after an error is encountered. Warnings, on the other hand, point out something that may be a problem. An example of a warning is the data set already aligned in time notification that we received during slice timing correction. Another warning related to our current problem occurred during the normalization step. This can be found slightly after the halfway point of the output after the at auto TLRC command. Apparently, the centers of the anatomical and template images are very far apart. The output says that if parts of the original anatomy gets cropped, which is our current problem, try adding the option init xform auto center to your auto TLRC command. We can do so by navigating to one directory above the preprocessing directory, removing that preprocessing directory, and then editing the file proc.sub08 to include the string init xform auto center after the auto TLRC command, which should be in line 119 of your proc file. Here I'm opening the file in text wrangler. We then locate the auto TLRC command and we add the additional option init xform auto center. Save the file and rerun it by going to the terminal and typing tcsh proc.sub underscore 08. As before, wait a few minutes for it to finish and then navigate into the preprocessing directory and load the same set of images as before. You should now see that the problem is fixed. Now that you've preprocessed the data, we can fit a statistical model and estimate the amount of brain activity in response to our experimental conditions, which we will cover in the next video.